2022 is almost done. And in this video, we're reviewing the best and worst of the year with my brother, Mobile Gamer. And if you're ready for a Mobile Gamer, tell him what to do. Let's go smash it. Hell yeah. Valley flying. Hello, Valley Club. Welcome back to the Valley Flying channel and this special year end edition of your Marvel Strike Force weekly news update. In this video, going through the best and worst of 2022 with my brother Mobile Gamer. How are you, Mobile? I'm doing amazing. How about yourself? I'm doing good as well. How did how in 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 how are you liking Marvel Strike Force as a compared to right now in the end of 2022 versus the end of 2021? uh i feel like it's it's more of the same maybe i'm just kind of acclimated to the things that are annoyances in the game you know uh whale stones events that basically have no purpose other than spending money and they're just convoluted offers buggy uh offers buggy systems buggy everything you know what i mean so i feel like it's more of the same actually yeah, there, there, was, there was some positives, some negatives. Uh, we'll go through it all. Let's just get right into it. So this is the first blog post of 2022 talking about this event for Spider Punk and Pocket Dimension, our first iteration of Pocket Dimension. Now, when you saw this was coming out January 14th, this new game mode, how excited were you? And uh, what, what did that excitement turn into as we've gotten three maybe iterations of it during this year? Yeah, so I mean, maybe I, you know, I hate to say that, uh, like I, I was expecting it to be a little bit more challenging, perhaps, and it uh, it turns out to be fine. I think Pocket Dimensions well liked by most of the community because the rewards are generous. But I feel like if the rewards were not generous, I don't know if the community would like this event very much. Yeah, I think it's just the rewards, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just it's the not rewards. like it's another dark dimension that we're getting a bunch of bunch of uh, cool challenges. It's just mainly the rewards. Now, the other thing that we got late 2021, early 2022 was this Avengers Tower. Now, that was right. a game mode that I was expecting a lot more from this year. Uh, I think with this, we maybe had this return three times during 2022. What yeah. were you expecting from this game mode in uh, 2022 when? When you first had this first iteration of this and uh, did it live up to those expectations for you? All right. I, so it, it played out a, a little bit better than I thought. And I think this uh, this game mode has a lot of opportunity for theory crafting and it can be very competitive if people uh, want to do as best as possible. Uh, what I what has been really frustrating about Avengers Tower is that there is no timeline or schedule for this event and the rewards are, are pretty garbage. I feel like Avengers Tower is the complete inverse of Pocket Dimension. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like uh, Pocket Dimension is 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 kind of mindless and good rewards and Avengers Tower. Uh, you, it, Avengers Tower. I, well, the other thing that's kind of kind of annoying about Avengers Tower it's it's definitely like a veteran player Kraken type style event, if you will. Yeah. Like it definitely is weighted towards. The, the larger account. So that's, I, I can't say that that's, you know, not every event, you know, should be just for the Krakens and Avengers yeah. Tower is, but the rewards are more or less meaningless. And there's like no uh, schedule on this Avengers Tower, but I do think it's a good addition to the game. And, and I do like this game mode very much. I do, and this was a little misleading. Avengers Tower events will likely run again in five to six weeks, something yeah, to change. And I thought, I thought that was every five to six weeks. I was looking no. forward to this. And, no, uh, no, no, that has uh, not little, happened every five to six weeks. Little little disappointing. Yeah. Hopefully we see that more in 2023 uh, coming up. But I thought that was a major win of the patch. All right, first patch of 2022 came on February 22nd. We got the release notes brought with us. Kate, Bishop, Echo, Morbius, Dr. Voodoo, also brought the new Mythic Flash event, the Nowhere Heist, which people were mm -hmm. wondering, what is this Nowhere Heist? We saw data mines about this in uh, all the way back in December, and we were wondering, what is this? Well, it turned out to be this thing to earn these dark promo credits and these Elite Seven credits as well. Uh, 
anything else stand out to you about this patch? There, there's not much that stands out. These characters, you know, they, they don't seem as important now as when they were initially released. And this Mythic Flash event, I guess later it became important when we needed uh, this Grootmas event for uh, for Rocket and Star-Lord. But uh, what, do, what do you think of uh, them adding this in uh, 5.10 right. well, a couple things there i mean I, I don't think you know echo kate bishop morbius dr voodoo i don't think we knew how important they were going to be inside of scourges and those teams you know and and pretty much you know you needed the specifically echo and kate bishop for young avengers and that was very important inside the scourge the mythic yeah. flash event i remember that coming through and it had the gear tier requirement to do the last tier of gear tier 15 on star lord and rocket and yeah. <laughs> And at that time, the the gear tier 15 was, and the pieces were so scarce. Now, I feel like it, it, it was worth it to do it now. And I did it maybe like uh, a month or so ago. I actually eventually like, Finished. you know, okay. finally did it, right? I finally took Rocket and Star-Lord to gear tier 15 just to do, and it's worth it now if you have the resources because you know it reoccurs on a, on a you know on every four Monthly. weeks right yeah. and so it, it is kind of worth it but at the time it was really hard to justify the value of, of upgrading the you know relatively to star lords and rocket and then you know we had the group miss event and so taking star lord and rocket to gear tier 15 didn't feel as bad uh because that event you know you you did need to have them geared up to get through it, it was actually pretty hard I, I actually did this the first run because we were so no what kidding. is this what is this and then and then there was a message in the envoy chat so people were like oh these are coming back every month i'm like well if this is coming back every month i might as well gear them yeah. right now at the first event so as soon as i saw that i geared these guys up it's like this is gonna suck but at least it's gonna suck for now and i won't have to worry about it ever again and it's coming back all the time so uh, I got lucky on this one. I wasn't sure because I thought the Avengers Tower would be coming back every month. That didn't happen. We got word that this was coming back every month. This one did happen. So I got lucky in upgrading those characters there for this yeah, one. Yeah, absolutely. All uh, right, next, we, then we got this roadmap, the big roadmap, the Age yeah. of Apocalypse preview. And this one, we had our first indication that Scourge events were coming this year. Now, this was, I think this was... Uh, had a lot of trepidation from the community wondering oh this is going to be bad this is going to be bad i think that these were actually one of the highlights of 2022 yeah. what did you think of these scourge events in total well i mean i, I just want to back up for a second in in fairness they've added a lot of game modes and a lot of new things and a lot of things to do in marvel strike force so yeah i think i think that 2022 uh, you know, you know, is a success, you know, be, be given that we've given more things to do. Now, I am a big fan of the Scourge events compared to the legendary events of the past. The legendary events yeah. of the past was, you know, as long as you met the unlock re requirements, it was it was a relatively easy, mindless event. It had no impact, uh, no replayability. It, it, it didn't feel like you earned anything. Like you, you just like, okay, you just go in and do it, right? And, and maybe you read the story, maybe you didn't read the story, but it was, it, yeah. they were largely unforgettable. Like I, I don't remember anything about the Jubilee Unlock event myself personally. I just don't, and I, or the Phoenix event. I just don't remember them. These no. scourges did a couple things. First of all, it made, it, it was meaningful gameplay. It was challenging. There were some annoying things about it, though, like right? playing the there same nodes over and over some, again. Some didn't and, work. The cheater yeah. boards in the first pestilence oh. event. There was, there was a lot. That, just a lot. Dude, they're hard. <laughs> um, and, and so they're hard, right? And uh, here's the thing, though. More players unlocked the the horsemen first time around than before. Yeah. They, and, and larger larger percent of the community got to participate in the event, and it felt meaningful that you earned the character. Now we had the problems with the leaderboards when this came out, that was a mess. Yeah, there's a lot of other problems. And <laughs> then they, the, the thing that's kind of disappointing is that, and, and this is just, I'll speak for myself. Then Scopely went on to sell the horsemen, just basically outright sell them and, and negated <laughs> this whole feeling that I, you know, it's like, man, I earned, I actually earned these horsemen and I worked hard in these, these scourge events and someone could just buy the characters. That was a little bit disappointing, but overall, I, I feel like this is a, 
a big improvement and and a definite you know more positive than negative without a doubt i i'm a big fan of this scourge event absolutely i agree i agree and what you said about uh, new players unlocking these the horseman characters and it, it is very true and it also feels very legendary i mean yes. having to do these runs over and legendary. over and over until you get the perfect run yes I, I i prefer these as well now you came from star wars galaxy of heroes before yes. marvel strike force yes where those legendary events not only do you have to build up those characters yes. they were tough they were would tough you prefer, yes. would you prefer yes. that kind of release method on these uh or or have our legendaries like we well, had in the past, where it's just about building these characters or have it building and have that challenge there. Okay, so the, what I do like about the Scourge event is that you can definitely try hard this Scourge event, right? And play it yeah. over and over and over again and get an opt. I mean, here's the truth. The optimal run for your roster means that you spend a lot of time playing. Yeah, yeah that's true. Or you don't. And you get and you you get an okay run for your roster for the size of your roster you get an okay run and then you you do it the second run and the third run right that you don't yeah. have to it's it's fine you're gonna unlock them and these 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 characters uh you know the the, the horsemen are amazing at low stars i mean think about yeah. how amazing is for the first three specifically uh, the fourth one we can talk about if you want but the first three horsemen were were unbelievable characters even at low stars and even actually the fourth one also if, if you want to play uh, archangel in raids he's amazing at low stars mm. so there was value on all four horsemen at all star levels and because the, the, they were just amazing characters and a large percentage of the community was able to unlock the first time around. I mean, I think I've done uh, polls on Twitch. I mean, we're talking like 90% of the players uh, were able to unlock. It was never that way with legendaries. Uh, it was maybe, maybe, what do you think? 50% of the people unlocked legendaries the first time around before? If I, that. If, if that. that, yeah. But yeah. now we're now they've, now they've created an event that that every you know more people get to participate in and 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 and, it's, and and it requires thinking and it requires effort if you want to get the the highest score for your roster that's the thing is like it, it you kind of get out of it what you put into it absolutely yeah. yeah i like it i like it i think this is a major win other thing that we've had is marvelstrikeforce.com nfz.gg got yeah, merged. We've had the roster sync that we've been wanting for years. Yeah. It is in the game now. It, it synchronizes to our roster yeah. uh, and our inventory as well. And then now we have our milestones and uh, the web stuff attached to that. What did you think of the integration of msf.gg this year? All right. Uh, so uh, I... I, first of all, I have more negative, more positive things than negative to say. There are some negative things about it. Uh, I think that the the information on MSF.GG is amazing. The integration with your roster uh, is great. What is annoying about it is that uh, you know we're 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 obligated we're compelled to go and log on to it on a daily basis that's, you know that's more the web rewards and uh, those milestones oh though, my than, god than the, than the roster sync of ms yeah but it's though. just like man going i mean it's like i mean it's if it feel i mean it's it, it's it, and then if you forget it's sometimes significant but it just yeah, feels like i've, I've done that i've done yeah that. <laughs> well see I, I stream six days a week and and on usually that one day that i don't stream which is saturday is the day that I forget, and I and just like one day a week, I forget to go in and and check it, and it's just kind of an annoyance, uh, you know, because they want to increase engagement, they want to move people to buy on the website rather than through your phone, uh, because you know they save thirty percent, which yeah. is a lot of money, you know, if they're making. I don't know if they have ten million dollars in revenue a month, you know, three million dollars, you know, potentially was going to payment processing, you know, through through Apple or Google. And so of course yeah. they want us to buy off of the website uh, and, and then they're pushing us to the website. But the integration with msf.gg and, and you know, being a part of Scopely, you know, they're owned by Scopely now is, is is great. It's amazing. And I think I think there's more stuff to come there and there's more things that could happen for sure. Yeah, I like I like what they've done. The the but exactly like you said, the store, the milestones all tied to different things and having to use apps. That's that's part's a negative. But the actual integration, I think they've done a good job. Now let's talk about this new mode that came out. We've we've had Avengers Tower, we talked about that pocket dimensions, mm -hmm. the nowhere heist, scourges. This is the big change in 2022, Cosmic Crucible. And 
this this mode I will talk about. This is the most fun and the most frustrating mode that yes. I ever got. I, I, I mean, I, I, I raged this yes. morning on stream over Cosmic Crucible, yes. but I also got to say this is the most fun mode yes. in Marvel Strike Force, in my opinion. Yes. What are what are your opinions of Cosmic Crucible? Uh, <laughs> it, 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 it feels bad when you lose, and, and there, there's definitely times that I've cursed <laughs> this game mode, and, and there's been times <laughs> where too. I Jeez. where I have not wanted to play this game mode. But the times that I hated this kid mode were is when I was playing poorly. Uh, it it, it, it definitely. Well. <laughs> it, and the thing that so the, uh, largely everything about it's great. It's it's definitely my favorite game mode in the entire game. Uh, you know you don't you're not dependent on your alliance, which is kind of annoying sometimes. You can play this by yourself. Uh, the rewards are decent. I mean they're they're great. The great rewards. Great, I, they, they, they improve them. Yeah, the rewards yeah. are awesome. Uh, and. The, the problem with this game mode, in my opinion, is matchmaking. And to be fair, matchmaking in every game is is not great. What And what I mean by that is that, it, you know, the better you play, you just get stacked up and stacked up against better and better players. And then, yeah. and, and, you know, if you win a lot and, and then you go into then, then you the, as a penalty for winning, you're paired up against people that are 10, 20 million collection power larger than you and that's, oh, see, and that's what I happens winning, i haven't been winning that enough to, to have those bad oh, matchups yeah. i've always had oh, matchups yeah. that it always comes out to the way i play i've always had winnable matchups and if i play right then i win if i don't then i lose and it's but yeah i, I guess i've been winning and losing enough that i haven't had those bad yeah. matchups this has been matchmaking has been I, decent for me <laughs> I, I i don't i mean all of the negative feelings and thoughts that i've had about cosmic crucible or 100 percent about you know me not playing well it, 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 it's, me it. well. it's me as well it. <laughs> it's me as well it's me and to be sure there are times where i said i hate this game mode it's trash i don't want to play today and it's because i lost yeah. you know like i lost the week I, before is that, like, it's is just that about a great me. I mean, they're getting us to invest this much into this, right? Invest, invest yeah. our emotion. I, is that a sign of a good game mode or a bad game mode, though? I, I think it's a good game mode. <laughs> I, I really do. Uh, I mean, oh Cosmic Crucible is, is is amazing. I mean, I, I is definitely... I, I mean, I think one of the complaints that we had in 2021 is that there there was there wasn't a lot to do, and, and a lot of the no. game modes were repetitious, and it was bad, and... Uh, balanced PvP didn't work out oh my and RTA we didn't, didn't work out. I didn't and, and this we year, got rid of balanced PvP. We got rid of the RTA. Oh, I know. And, that's, and, that's a major and, win. <laughs> and, and, and if we if we look at scourges, it, it's a drastic improvement. If I if we look at uh, a Cosmic Crucible, it's a major improvement. It, it, it definitely is a better system. Absolutely. Yeah, this I, I'm, I'm happy with what's happened this year. Uh, Avengers Tower, they're looking to improve that. Uh, some quality of life changes that we've had event campaigns uh, getting their difficulties rework. We did get those hard uh, campaign modes. Uh, options say uh, high to save squads, auto battle on the raids. I think that that had some mixed results. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, I'd want to kind of skim through these uh, stability and soft lock issues. We, this, is, this is one of the first blog posts that wasn't a weekly blog post. That's about the bugs. And it started right. on March 8th, and we've added many, many, many of these. I don't yeah. remember what, what all these bugs were, but I see something about T-poses there. But I did want to yeah. point this out. This is the first time that they started uh, integrating that. Well, we, might, we might get we three can. or four of these a week now compared, you know, <laughs> and before these. This this was, it's definitely more communication is better than less communication. But yeah, the is. number of posts that are about some sort of issue or busted offer, uh, you know, and I, I think the rate is the same, but now it's documented and compensation makes more sense and the communication is better. I think this has a lot to do with uh, community manager or, uh, Archangel. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's been a major win as well. I mean, it, yeah. it started off a little rough with him, yep. I got to admit, and I criticized him as well. But I yep. think uh, he's yep. been a major, major positive to yep. uh, Marvel Strike Force he's this net, year. He's a net positive. I think there was just a yes. learning curve to what he was doing. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and and he was a player. And so I think he's uh, and, and today, you know, he's he's come into the position. But uh, yeah, it was rocky there the first <laughs> couple months. Oh, my God, it was bad. But anyways, it's much better now. Yeah, it's he's, great. He's, very, he's very good. I think yeah, he's very good. Overall major win. Uh, new playable character 6.0. So 6.0. This is when we got uh, Cosmic Crucible. We got Morgan Le Fay, Doctor Strange, Heartless, Agatha, Wong, Madeline Pryor, the Dark Cold team. Yeah. We also got Scourge Pestilence in this in this update. Yeah. I think this is a great uh, update yeah. here. Great, great team, great event. Yeah. 
Yeah, a lot, a lot of good stuff here. Um, yeah, this is great, great stuff in this uh, update here. Those, those are the characters there that are still very, very influential yeah. nowadays. We got some orange gear updates in this uh, in, during this patch as well. Uh, now two campaign nodes and costing 10 energy. I don't know if you remember in the beginning of the year, we had some with that that were on some nodes with characters that cost 20 energy, very hard to farm. Uh, orange, the ultra star, the ultra store, four times more mini uniques in there mm -hmm. and then got the war orb updated quantity is a six so all that stuff got updated uh during this patch as well uh and we're still feeling this are, are you noticed and, and are, have you noticed a big difference in your orange gear economy since yes this it's... year i mean they, i was struggling to get it and now it seems like orange gear is kind of solved yeah, I, I feel like um like 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 we were talking about the nowhere heist and like how precious it was to take Rocket and and, and Star Lord to gear tier fifteen that I didn't want to do it. Now uh, I'm looking. I, I feel like I can take a majority of my important characters to gear tier fifteen without thinking too much about it. Uh, a lot of that I think has to do with the armory. 14 orbs and armory 15 orb situation mm. which we probably will talk about later oh, even before that though even before yeah. we got this crazy amount it hasn't been as much of a struggle yeah I, think. I mean it's i mean there's always bottlenecks and, and the thing is is i feel like orange gear availability is much better than it was six months or a year ago without a doubt it, it's significant yeah. All right. So this is when we actually got the Morgan Le Fay Pestilence event. So yeah. on April 13th, 5 p.m., uh, major, major wins. I know with this one, I did a lot of runs, whereas the subsequent ones, I maybe did one really, really hard run. How many runs in this initial Pestilence event did you do compared to some of these uh, more recent scourges like Archangel and Red Hulk? I, I hate to admit to tell you how many runs I did on Archangel. You still did a lot, okay. <laughs> no, I did I, one total run. Okay, but that's what I thought because I saw yeah. you posted that like immediately. I, I, I posted immediately, my first run immediately, and you had like a I immediately posted, <laughs> Yeah, I immediately posted a, a pretty good run that you know was that was good enough to give me a six star i mean when i posted the run i was like a hundred and something 127 but it ended up being a a six star run i i could have re-ran for a seven star perhaps but you know <laughs> the value uh yeah it, it, it's it i put you know and i think if i wanted a, a seven star you know i could have put the time in and got a seven star or you know not i think it's just a matter of uh what you put into you get out to it now i yeah. i think when this came out this was a big problem though uh this was the introduction of leaderboards and we yes. were not used to leaderboards and uh the problem with leaderboards was oh, we, were, you know, we were used to them the devs weren't used to keeping the the integrity of them as well. yes <laughs> well do you remember how long it took for the payout on morgan lefay because they well, had to clean like up the week. leaderboards it was like yeah, a week or something it took, right? it took a long time i think it took a week and you know in in this last pestilence uh it was out in it, one day 24 hours right and but, so yeah. it, you know so but this was a, a huge growing pains from marvel <laughs> strike force where you know legendary events were basically uh gated by entrance requirements ge gear yeah. tier something like that now uh it's basically a leaderboard and this was very controversial at the time because of you know exploits hacking cheating apki modifications all kinds of horrible things and uh now that has been cleaned up as far as i know I, it doesn't seem to be a problem but the game was really exposed to have a lot of holes when these leaderboards came out you know they were people with low collection powers on the top of the leaderboards boy i remember making video after video in a row talking about this like 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 several video like for almost like an entire week maybe like five or six videos in a row about why this is bad and they got to fix it and and i feel like it's largely been fixed and it's a good system now i i'm really happy with the way it, it's playing out yeah, it seems like it seems like the growing pains of these cheater boards of okay, we're kind of through that because if there are if there is cheating, I don't, I'm not noticing it. So that, yeah. that's a good thing. You mean you um, never know? I mean, I, I, my my experience, every game I've ever played, is, you know, is is hackable. Every game I've ever played in some way or form, it, it's just like you know how how in how in your face is it? How prevalent is it? Do they have systems in place to detect people and ban people? And it appears that they do, as far as I know.
Well, here's the thing. Ignorance is bliss. So if there's cheating going on and it's, I don't know about it and it's not affecting me that I know about it. Yeah, it's, I haven't heard anything fine. in a it's long fine. time. So, yeah. and I haven't noticed any cheating. So yeah, yeah ignorance is bliss <laughs> in that sense. All right. Uh, Unlimited X-Men. We got yeah. the next Unlimited X-Men uh, announced in this blog post here. And this is when we got the announcement of Cosmic Crucible coming on May 11th. We talked enough about this, but we also got this A Force of Nature, which was a start of these month long milestone events, which was uh, something that I think is going to continue going on in 2023. Mm -hmm. I think there were some good things about this. Uh, having to, having it to chase something at the end of the month seemed like a good thing. You know, having all these little goals add up to one long goal. I thought it was a good thing. What did you think of these month-long milestone events? Now, now there were some events that were really bad, that was really grindy, but I, I kind of like this. And I liked uh, a lot of the initial iterations with all these dark promo credits, all the stuff that it gave out, the shards were more. What did you think of these when they were announced and what do you think of how it eventually evolved into with these month-long milestones? Listen, it's not com it's not complicated. Actually, it is complicated. But I, <laughs> it is complicated. That is the point. If you have, if it requires a spreadsheet to understand how the points are are going to be awarded in, a, in an event, and when and this is even worse, when people, you know, so people go and do spreadsheets. I mean, there's a lot of people in the community they go do spreadsheets, right? And and thank you for doing them, right? Yes. And, and the events you are they like yeah we we don't have enough information to even fill out the spreadsheet until the final week of a month-long event there's they they're really it is so deliberately intentional that they're trying to make the events as convoluted and confusing as possible they that part i don't like that part i don't like. i do not like that i mean their intention is fomo fomo the last couple days of the event you're missing just a couple points to get the next milestone and then there's an offer that solved they create a problem and they sell you a solution so they're creating a problem with these events now largely these events have been um grindy player friendly uh meaning that if you are try hard and you play the, the event and with you know you have a good alliance that is successful in completing coordinated uh, you know assault largely these month-long events have been finishable without spending yeah. money so I, and they could change that um you know and so i d i don't think that they they're 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 awful in that sense but you know we'll have to see i mean they could change it they could change them to whale stones at the end uh, I mean, they could do anything they want but uh, largely these events have been uh you know highly engaged player friendly if you will i mean i i've i've finished all of them i, I mean um, uh, it, what about you yeah I, yeah I have as well except for that second the second summer of blunder one i I've, i think i've only finished the first one of that or yeah something, something like that or some, yeah something weird something like that i don't know uh but yeah th there's there's elements that i like and there's things that i don't you know the, the convoluted nature the the grindiness and then the rewards for grinding a whole month doesn't seem like it's worth the squeeze yeah. but but there, there's elements of it that i do I could, enjoy I, I could totally do without these events to be honest with you the month-long events just seem mm. I mean, uh, I mean, just this you know idea that you know you you miss a couple days and it throws the entire event off for the month. What, you know, it's just it's bad. really horrible. That's what feels I, bad. It's that's what not feels not bad. good. Yeah, but when you get it, you're like, oh yes, I did all this grinding and I made it all. So that that. But what do you even get that. though? It doesn't even feel like the rewards are. You used to get dark <laughs> promo credits. You used to get a lot of shards. Now you get some fully crafted uh, gear, which is not as valuable as it was when we first got this event going on. All right, uh, then we have 6.1, Gambit, Spider-Woman, Nico, Phantom X, and Dazzler. We got a store update, multiple orbs, which is great, but we also <laughs> got this, this claim all button, which I know just uh, annoyed you a, a few weeks ago. <laughs> the claim all button with uh, rewards attached for the inbox. How many times have you got screwed by this inbox message being all claimed? Once, once, once. Uh, yeah, once. <laughs> Uh, it's happened like three I, times. I absolutely did not push the button. It just, I have, I went into a screen and then all my rewards popped up. 
Like it's um, like nothing. I did nothing. Like I'm very aware of this problem, and it, it just yeah. it did nothing, and it just popped up, and there's nothing you can do about it. I, so is what's the problem though? The problem is is that it doesn't that, work all the time. It works. No, the problem is is that the game rewards hoarding, and it's stupid. They've created the game and systems in place where. The optimal play is to save your rewards for right. the last minute. And that is the problem. Is it's the, the monthly milestone events that, that it's related to though, right? Yeah, I mean, they. I mean, we just had an event this week where, uh, you know, if you saved all of your Doom Raid uh, rewards for the week prior, you did better off an event that's just started this week, you know? And so the game is rewarding uh saving currency saving hoarding everything and then Hoard you're waiting harder, folks oh my god and 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 that is the problem so this i mean it, it, this claim all button and this claim all button bug wouldn't be an issue if they built the game correctly we didn't have all these hoarding events it, it, it's it, do they want us to hoard or do they not want us to hoard they keep making events that reward didn't. hoarding they said they didn't I know. last year but i know i don't agree i don't, I don't agree, <laughs> I don't agree. <laughs> they definitely they definitely the the the, the, the best way to min max this game is hoarding absolutely yeah i i agree i agree all right so we got the cosmic crucible went live we had new iso 8 tier 4 level iso 8 and then uh, the raid release they start to they start to tease the uh, raid sim coming here uh mm -hmm. initially we'll talk about that a little bit more uh do want to skim through these blog posts all right then we got rogue this is a big one here uh this was initially bugged a two yeah. out of two cost but all the way down here we got this one this one is still being talked about because all these character availability they talk about all these characters becoming farmable lady death strike shang chi cersei magic ghost spider spider punk star lord all got farmable but icarus from this blog post all the way back in may icarus still not farmable when is when is he going to come farmable is he going to become farmable very very soon because he's in that strike pass now is he going to the arena or after this or is he still going to be delayed in 2023 I feel I feel like the spirit of this post was very deliberate that that the community was complaining about availability and they drafted this post and the idea was yes we know we sorry that you feel that way and we're going to do our best to fix the problem and we're going to fix the problem but then when you actually read the words it's very legalistically drafted and they did what they said they were going to do but we still do not have good availability to Icarus. Now, do we have increased availability the way that that post is written? Yes. They they put Icarus in a 2% drop rate inside of a premium That's orb. That's true. That's it's true. technically true. If you're a lawyer, uh, I, I mean, I feel like, oh. why does it have to be that way? Why, why I mean, the, the spirit of this post, you know, is that soon these characters they could be more available well our definition of more available or increased available is different than yours but yeah whatever bedwetter agree you know what i mean Agreed. so i agree I, the spirit of this post is horrible like i feel like it was misleading and icarus uh, icarus is gonna be like emma they're just not gonna they're they're, they're not giving her away I, I mean how long how long did it take for emma uh to be in a node and farm it happened season. recently in two one years season. one she, season that seasonal orb one yeah, season yeah dude, it took <laughs> a, a two year long years <laughs> it took years uh and so uh, icarus is uh and, and he is that good right he's very yeah. good i mean he's up there i mean like emma uh emma has been good for a long time and i feel like icarus and cersei together again so anyways um i i, I it, it's it is what it is the games that they play with us in the community it it, it feels like uh, they do we these just, things on purpose, you we know. We just got to play the game better than them. We got to play their games better than they do. All right, I we guess, have more Roland Rebel. What did I want to highlight in this thing? Uh, store updates coming. Uh, I'm not seeing. We got Victory Blueprint, the Roland Rebel. I guess this is the next month long milestone that I wanted to highlight here. Not too much. All right, Gambit Raids. Let's talk about these Gambit mm. Raids because, like these month long milestones, no. there's things about this that I did enjoy. I liked. I like the challenge of it. I like that we had these different characters rotating. I like that um, they had pretty good rewards, but there were some issues with this. These are running very limited. These aren't coming back. We had to bring build up certain characters that uh, we're only going to use for a couple weeks or so. 
uh what did what did you li- and then and then there was uh, a lot of other issues that i can't remember with the the uh, nose not working properly and people getting extra gambit shards what was your impression of gamma rays looking back at it all these months later good bad some good some bad what what do, what do you think about these gambit rates? um well first of all i i don't think the community like this at all uh, no, it I think did not go. Not it, at it, all. No, this was not good. Um, and, and, I, and I think it started with the gambit offers being atrocious, uh, and then the, the the raids were convoluted. You know, you could only use the the modifiers changed. The teams that you played against the team che- that changed, and you had to take in characters that See, were not I like, good. I like that part, though. I like that part. I like uh, that challenge. I, I feel like it, I felt like it was like random on random, and and this was. Uh, on another level of convoluted and then uh, the lanes were supposed to be symmetrical but they weren't and there was one lane that was a lot harder than the rest and basically everybody could get through it except for one person uh mm, it was it was that. a big mess yeah they, and they just they built and they, I, I don't know I'm, I'm glad that they abandoned this idea uh i, I feel like they tried something and it wasn't well received it didn't work out and and i think it was hard for them to make too i i I believe that this was not like an easy system for them to develop which was why it was even more confusing only went for 14 days and never bringing this back i think the community would have received this better if if they knew it was coming back and had some reason to build up some of these other characters but i feel like they tried something it didn't work out and they abandoned it i I, i'm glad i get out of here i don't want to i don't i I wish they took certain certain elements of this and brought certain elements back because there are certain elements that i did enjoy but overall i think uh, yeah i agree with the community there all right so that's that one uh we've had some other uh, characters we had the as guardians a seven day login streak i think this was pretty big we have our raid sims here mm-hmm. our auto completes of objectives mm-hmm. how many arena battles have you done since since we got this uh, seven day login streak <laughs> i still do my arena battles i i mean i i kind of just do them every time i log in i make sure i do okay. one i i get through them okay okay I've, I've i don't know that this, i do five I, every day but I, I i do three or four every day you know for sure Gotcha. I thought this was a major, major win yeah. of uh, 2022 as well. This seven-day login streak. I like that. Uh, next release, 6.2. We got Rogue, Sunfire, Mighty Thor, Valkyrie, and the Asgardians. And then they finally introduced that seven-day login streak that we talked about. I, I, major positives there. All right, and then we got this Summer of Thunder Milestones, which had all kind of screw-ups involved. There was one for the previous month where if you got the one offer, you got all the Dazzler milestones. Mm -hmm. Then they eventually sent the 50,000 Mjolnir fragments, making it all complete. And this is around the time of the game jam. And they said Mm -hmm. they're going to address the weak spots, more testing, longer lead times, development of additional tools. And I feel now they've kind of done that stuff, but it took them like three or four months to get this stuff because the bugs at this point actually got worse for a few months. Did you did you notice anything about the bugs here or is that just me that thought it got worse for about three or four months after this happened? yeah every time they've come out with something they 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 it was buggy broken not working correctly or excessively greedy or just bad or something <laughs> right there's always something and i feel like it's like this push pull with them on everything like uh throwing stuff out and then you know then depending on the community's feedback to make it right it it feels like very few and far things are done right the first time well that's what we're here for we're the beta testers we we test it out and uh, make stuff better for the community all right then we got this new raid team we got a night uh the notice of this new raid team coming is this even in the right order Yes, it is. Okay. It is in the right order. The new raid team, the Bionic Avengers, which is a solution for the uh, tech raid team that we're still working with nowadays. We got more introduction of the rest of the characters and more important, the war updates. Uh, You are a more hardcore war player than I am. Mm -hmm. How much did this uh, change, this minor deflect, not letting us do all these uh, abilities, uh, the ability blocks and everything like that to these characters? Did this make a major difference, these war updates here? Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, I think at one point, um, it was so defense heavy that nobody was full clearing at all everybody was stuck and there were certain teams that were stopping 
progression and uh, the room bonuses. So they changed it drastically. And they also introduced more teams that were more offense minded. So mm. definitely things have pivoted from defense to offense without a doubt. And I, I think that's a good thing. Is that, are you feeling oh, yeah. the same way at the top end alliance as well? Yeah, it's a lot faster now. The, 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 it, it was very, very defense like it was bad yeah it was bad there for a while i guess i guess that's an improvement as well all right then we got to notice of these sagas these awaken abilities and notice that we're gonna need other teams not just our horsemen to unlock apocalypse several additional characters for this apocalypse saga uh and this was the big major thing that people were chasing for this year some people enjoyed the major chase kind of like these milestones some people didn't uh because apocalypse is the character they want and uh that they're done after that what did you think of this major uh event that we have for apocalypse starting with morgan Le Fay, ending with death and then uh, ultimately ending with apocalypse i mean i like the structure of the event i mean it's just it's 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 super over the top if you think about uh the number of of legendary characters and their teams and the strike teams required to get apocalypse never mind the 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 number of teams and the scourge teams required to get get each individual horseman i mean it, it's it, i mean when you look at it it's a monstrous pyramid scheme uh, yeah. and it's like it's like 80 or something 80 plus characters just to get apocalypse uh you know it's a journey I, I think it's okay i mean the one thing that's still outstanding right now is that we don't really know the number of or what the characters are going to be the final strike requirements uh, other than spider weaver i mean we're just kind of in the dark we don't know if it's going to be one team two teams old characters new characters we know nothing uh, about what that's going to be it's going to be villain mystic controllers all over again yeah all right uh, Gamma Team. We got introduction of the Gamma Team with Red Hulk, Abomination, Amadeus Cho. This was a this was a fun team. Very frustrating in Cosmic Crucible. I think the big thing that we got in this was the announcement of the Doom Three raids coming, and then Cosmic Crucible leagues. And then we also got more Origin gear as well with the announcement of this blog post. Doom Three raids are kind of the big challenge right now in uh, in as far as the raids in Marvel Strike Force. Hmm. Uh, do you think that this this introduction of these new raids, the Doom Three raids, and the requirements is a positive or negative for Marvel Strike Force? Well, with I mean, they changed it, right? I mean, they with they the the requirements to get into like three point four was blue ISO three, and then it was supposed to be blue ISO four to get into three point five, right? Which yeah. is like, and then you know, it, and three point four was very difficult, and then three point five they changed the requirement to blue ISO three, they dropped it down, and it was very difficult, almost like specifically the mutiny lane was like nearly unfinishable and then they came out with archangel now it's pretty easy to get through it and yeah. then you know right now the only lanes that people are uh struggling i guess is a little bit in bio but not really and then there's a rebirth team for that i guess uh but the the skill is very hard i i, I think i'm i'm happy with the raids i mean i think the raids are fine i do as well i, I like them overall all right uh next part of the year we got the 6.3 with Deathlock, Viv Vision, Hulkbuster, Brawn, Abomination in this. We got those Doom 3 raids that we talked about, the war boost that we talked about, leagues for Cosmic Crucible. We got these new origin challenges to give us more gear, and then the final items. So I thought this was overall a pretty big win as far as the features that we got for this update. But we also got something in this update that I think was a major negative. We got the introduction of Red Hulk, but if we scroll all the way down to that introduction of Red Hulk, we got these update to start times, which yeah. is very confusing to me, very confusing to the rest of the players. We have reset times. We have many different times throughout the day that we need to log in. Some milestones is reset at the old time. Some milestones reset at the new time. I think this was a major, major negative that this happened. Um, what, did, what are your thoughts of these update to start times? Yeah, this this has not gone well. This has made things more complicated. They did move everything. They only moved new things. And what items come at the event start time versus the server reset time is needly complicated. Uh, I mean, if you think about it right now, you have the stores refreshes. So that happens three times a day, right? And, yeah. and then you have your arena 
your arena's at a different time. And then you have your war and your war starts at a different time. And then your crucible stops and ends at a certain time, right? And then there's an event reset time, there's a server reset time, and then there's an account reset oh time. Oh my goodness. Why? 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 Well, I, well, I mean, well, what they said here is to put a, a, a greater emphasis on game stability and a smoother play experience. Has, has this made your play experience smoother, mobile gamer? No, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like, I feel like uh, a lot of so th that so this is what the problem is. So it's, it's you know, server reset used to be at a certain time. Um, you know, I'm always online on on Twitch at that time and all the issues would come at the same time and depending um, whether or not it was daylight savings time or not that typically was at five o'clock mm -hmm. so what what their intention was is that they wanted to move you know five o'clock in california you know they don't want and if there's a big problem you know they don't want to have to stay two three four five six hours after to fix a problem right and they were yeah. doing that pretty often they were working into the nights to fix problems but the problems weren't identified until five o'clock and so yeah. their intention was to move it to two o'clock so that the problems could be identified three hours earlier and you know i proposed something different you know what my proposal was what change all these reset times to 3 a.m so that they do it right the first time because nobody wants to work at 3 a.m I like that too. I like it. I, anything that streamlines it to one reset time or fewer resets time than all the ones we have now, I think would be better. But yeah, it's just yeah. unbelievable that. And, and the thing is, is they move some things up to two o'clock, but a lot of the things are still at the old reset time. And so it's confusing. confusing. So, I'm confused. so it, there's time changes too, right? So right now, event resets at one o'clock, and then then and then server reset is at four o'clock. A lot of the bugs still come in at four o'clock. Like they yeah. didn't move. I mean, uh, the bugged offers, bad offers, they come in at four o'clock. A lot of stuff happens at one o'clock, but still a lot of stuff happens at four o'clock. So all they did is split it into the, the problems that appear into two different times. I, I think the problem isn't this. The problem is, is that they allow these bugs to happen anyways. Uh, is, that is the problem. Well, fix the bugs and then move the server reset time back to when it was. That, that's that's what I would like. Stop splitting it up and making it super confusing. Yeah. All right. Uh, you mentioned another character for the Apocalypse Unlock, Spider Weaver. She got announced. Now, when that team was announced, we got the announcement of season one of Cosmic Crucible, which sure. we're still in. September 15th, it started the Age of X. I was ready for this Age of X to be done. Very, very yeah. frustrating in some rooms. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of season one right now that's going on right now in Cosmic Crucible? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm over it. Like, I think it's great. I, I, I think I think this idea of changing the room bonuses, you know, frequently every two months or whatever it is, is great. I, I don't understand the need to delay it uh, and why we had to do another two months with the same things. It's fine. Uh, yeah. it, you know, we're, we're using characters that we... Uh, we probably like I've, I've, I all these characters that are important right now inside of Cosmic Crucible, whether it's Astonishing X Men or Uncanny or even like, X twenty three, right? Yeah, probably won't get used after this. Like, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, I, it's just the truth. Not I the mean, dad I, bros, the dad bros, dad are bros, gonna be yeah. Used. Oh man, no, <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't, I they're they're not great once those bonuses go away. Specifically, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, they're not. Wolverine will still get used, but uh, you know X twenty three and Dad Bros, like you mentioned, they're just not going to be good after those bonuses go away. Uh, you're right. I don't want. All right, six point four is when we got Red Hulk. We got Spider Weaver twenty ninety nine. The rest of the Tangled and a strange release, Mister Negative, who was uh, kind of ignored and then they just kind of gave him away for free. Uh, any any major thoughts of six point four? before we move on i mean mr negative is is kind of weird the way they released him and then they then they given him away uh, it makes you what they're wonder what they're going to do with zombie iron man because that was also kind of a weird release as well yeah that that was that was that was a bad release as well 
uh 6.5 this is actually i was wrong this is when the game jam happened when a fine feature wasn't working for 6.4 this is when i think the yeah. bugs got the worst when when they went on this game jam and that was not working uh this is probably the low point as far as bugs in uh, marvel strike force and this was after that blog post that they said they would improve all their processes there uh even more issues they they even getting even more of these issues this is a whole blog post just about these issues that they're trying to solve here back in september i think is when it, oh is that the, the is part. that the post that says that uh we deserve a world-class experience uh, yeah i think it might have yeah, uh, yeah. Balance takes so issues. Yeah, world class experience will continue to strive for that. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is the world class <laughs> post you're right Yeah, that. well, it's a it's a famous post at this point. It is. Uh, that's it is. that's gonna be famous. Like, uh, where our harshest critics or that player, you know, ha has combat prowess. I mean, uh, world class experience is gonna be, you know, go down forever. Is like Your a famous pride and excitement of uh, upgrading pride these and accomplishment. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right, and in September, we got 5,000 power cores just from where, uh, who knows? It was, it was supposed to be for an offer. We just got those 5,000 power cores. The bugs keep going on in September. As we continue down, the Blitz rewards got updated. I don't know if this is a major change, but this is this, this is better. You know, instead of getting 10 Blitz credits, now we're getting between 10 and 1,000. This mattered for some events. Um, yeah, it's like it's 15 on average now, I think. Yeah, it's, it's a little better. You got increased there as well. Uh, and even more bugs going into October. They're giving us 5,000 power, 500 power cores just for playing because the bugs are getting so bad. Uh, you mentioned Zombie Iron Man. That was the major character in update 6.5 that got released. What did you think of that Zombie Iron Man release method and the confusion about that? I think there was a lot of uh, anger when it was uh, announced, but... I don't, I don't know if it was really as bad as everybody expected it to be. Yeah, I, I think I think uh, a lot of this would have been uh, like if we could have like had early access to play the kit uh, and understand fully the way that zombie Iron Man interacted with Hela in advance of all these like uh, offers and things like that. I think that would have gone over a lot better. I, I agree. Uh, we also got uh, this new re retreat option in raids, which was very yeah, good. That's actually pretty good, actually. A really, really yeah. major thing. And then the campaign difficulties, which give us more characters to farm. Wong, Cersei, other characters there. I think these are major, major... Uh, another, another, another wins for 2023 in this... Mm -hmm. uh, or 2022 in this game. All right. Uh, the fortified chromium. The... <laughs> the, the yeah. We're still we're still wondering about that, and uh, there was uh, those the errors uh, distributing those. Uh, next weekly blog we got Spycros. The this is the this is the major one here. The big starter offer re-release. The crazy amount of armory fourteen and fifteen orbs. Mm -hmm. Did you get this offer? Oh yeah. Do you ever have to worry about your armory of fourteen and fifteen gear pieces ever again? Well no you don't i mean uh, but here's the thing there's other bottlenecks i mean um yeah. you know you if if you get past the armory i mean there's all these like stop gags like and, and the basic example of this is like if you spend too much gold then you start running into training material problems right yeah i mean everybody understands this well if you spend too much gear then you need to buy more armory 14s, 15s. Then you need to buy more uniques. Then you need to buy more origin pieces. Then you need to buy more, more focused and damaged candles. Then you need to buy something always triggers a bottleneck at some point. So just eliminating yeah. armory 14s and 15s still does not eliminate the Catalysts. origin gear pieces, the, the catalyst, the SPCs. Yeah. They're still there or the unique pieces. So they, they it's it's set up in a way where if you get too many, if you get too much gold, you're still gonna have a problem with training materials, right? Well, if you get too yeah. much armor in 14 period, you're still gonna have other bottlenecks. So all the catalyst that I need. Yeah, you're still gonna have bottlenecks. Yeah, so they they could do that all the time and uh, continue on with those and not not really make a difference with uh, the players there. All right, Death Scourge event details. Mm. This is when we got the announcement mm. of minions for Death Scourge caused a lot of anger to the community. I was upset. Didn't seem that bad though. That didn't seem like the worst part of the note. In in hindsight, how bad was this death skirt minion requirement? Well, they 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 posted a, a post after this. Or I don't know if you uh, highlighted it, where they talked about reducing the difficulty or saying that the difficulty was going to be simpler. And I suspect that was because of the community outrage. So yeah. uh, I mean, I I think what was what was the part that was dirty about this 
uh, and it turned out, I think, fine, was that they required in difficulty one, two, three, and four minions. Like yeah. where they didn't, rec they, you know, that was not one, two, difficulties one, two, three, and four. You don't need to have Bionic Avengers and Wakandans, but you did need the minions. Yeah. And there, there's no reason to upgrade minions and people had to upgrade minions. Now the nodes turned out being easier than we thought. It could have been a lot worse. That's that's exactly what this is. This event could have been a lot worse. Yeah. Uh, the way it played out was that, uh, you know, that some, a lot of people, I had no minions upgraded or barely any investment in. And instead of being able just to like cruise through the first one, two, three, four difficulties, unlike Archangel, and they they, they were forced to think about minions. So it, it, it is what it is. Yeah. And uh, it, it didn't seem as bad, especially with those scourges there. Uh, but it, it could have been communicated a lot more. And I'd like to think that the difficulty being what it was, was because of all the outrage. Well, and they the had a post the, about and it. The complaining and, that we did. And, and, and it was open to interpretation. And the way that I interpreted the post is that because we complained, uh, they modified the difficulty. But that was my that's, interpretation that's, of that That's post. what I like to think happened. Uh, it, 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 was, it was because of the communication. All right. So we got the rebirth team announced, which is still a little controversial. At this time, are you thinking of building a rebirth right now? Or are you going to wait on that a little bit more? Uh, I'm 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 optimistic that they might have some use inside of Crucible and War, and so I'm going to upgrade them. And uh, if 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 the Rebirth team allows for me to one shot Node Two of the Bio uh, consistently, right right now I have about a 25% chance of one side one shotting with Gamma. Uh, so you know it, you know it'll be fine. I I don't feel like it's a um, a, a FOMO. Uh, high intensity, you must have team. Uh, I, I do believe at this time, I do believe Scopely changes things and make characters more important later and do different events. And we just have no idea. But at this time, uh, I can see a lot of people not really understanding their necessity. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm building as many, I'm trying to get as many gold stars and red stars for them, but I'm not putting too many resources in right now. Just waiting, waiting to see for yeah, them. I, I think what you're saying is getting as many gold and red stars as you can, and, and and then you can pick your place when to upgrade the gear. I mean, you don't yeah. have to pick your, you don't have to upgrade the gear right now, but I think avoiding getting stars and red stars on them would be a mistake. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Get get as much as that as possible with that. Uh, Crucible got a nice update here. We got Gambit, Hulkbuster, Abomination added to the store. Uh, I think that was a great thing here. 6.6 uh, .6 .6 .6 release notes. We have with the release that we're in now, Archangel, Nemesis, US Agent, Captain Carter, Agent Venom, with the War Horseman Saga added to this. We got the Guardians that stole Groot Miss, which I think was a good event. What mm -hmm. What is your impression of this event? I, th I thought it was good rewards. Uh, didn't need to upgrade all the Guardians. I didn't really need to upgrade Drag or Groot, so that was a good thing, and previous did that. Yeah, I mean, first of all, you didn't have to uh, three-star all the nodes. I mean, no. if you just wanted the first-time completion bonus, and, and if you happened to three-star the node that had the items that you want, then it didn't matter, right? Yeah. And, and, and a lot of the nodes could be three-starred, you know, if you timed, you know, Gamora's ultimate when she gets offense up and then into her special so uh you know and a lot of people have gamora already upgraded so a lot of it was just you know playing the node correctly i i i don't think it was a bad event i think the event was I pretty it was good a great event awesome yeah. first time rewards I, I think this was a major win as well all right we got the herald of death the death scourge started on december 13th just wanted to point out the date there on this blog post and this is what i think you were talking about where there's no intention to add the the to rework these minions uh, the death scourge was slightly adjusted with the difficulty to nodes requiring minions to be easier, allow for more variety of compositions. And I think yeah, this is so what my you interpretation to. is that is they saw the community concerns and feedback about it, and they went and adjusted it. They, 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 the community was very vocal. I was very vocal about the minion issue, yeah. right? And uh, if if it was twice as hard, if the minion part was twice as hard. How would people have felt? And I and I I think they got that message and then they adjusted it back. I I think so as well, especially by the wording here. So the the complaining 
it did do something. And that, that brings up a point that you were talking about earlier with all the complaining, a lot of these events, they, they were not very good in the first part while we were looking at this, we're looking at a lot of these things and we're worried about some of these events, how bad they would be. And through our complaining, a lot turned out better than expected, right? Yeah, I mean, they've, they've, they've told us many times that they don't care how much we complain on Reddit. Uh, and, they, and they actually have said that they, they welcome it. So I, I know a lot of people is like, oh, all people do is complain. I, 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 I personally have seen it make a difference numerous times. Numerous times those posts on Reddit, Discord, whatever, have made a big difference. Absolutely. Yeah, how many how many of these events or things that we're talking about in uh, 2022 did were we like, oh, that's gonna suck. And then looking back at it, I'm like, oh, it wasn't that bad. A lot of that was because of the complaining and stuff that we did to, I, to I would, head that off before it. I got would go worse. as far to say that a a well worded, popular post on Reddit once a week makes a big difference to something that actually gets changed in game. Because, mm. uh, you know, like if because, if, you know, something, you know, at least once a week and because I know I forward a lot of those Reddit posts to developers. That, hey, this is a hot topic for the community, has a lot of upvotes. This is a problem. And then they change things. So uh, I think it's a good thing. I do as well. All right. Last but not least, let's talk about this present store, the final way to end 2022. Uh, do you think that this was a good way to end all these milestone events? You know, I mean, we got some issues with the good, with the communication about the prices in the first week, but we got second, third, fourth. We communicated yeah. uh, up front again. I think overall, it ended up OK. It could have been communicated better in the first part. But what, what are your well, impressions yeah, of this I, event? I, don't, I don't think they had any intention on telling us anything about this event and the pricing mm. until we complained. Uh, again, this was <laughs> a Reddit post and complaining made the difference so that we actually got the information in advance. Is this event amazing? I, I don't know. I, I, okay. I, have, I have some weird, weird thoughts about it. I mean, uh, not knowing how many presents you're going to get at any given time, uh, you know, because it looks like you got it was backloaded. You know, the way that the event, the month long event worked is that you didn't get that many in the first week. I mean, you only got, yeah. they got like nothing and they all, and then towards the end of the event, you start getting large numbers of them, right? Yeah. And then they also were scaling the pricing, the, the pricing on the first week. So it was, it, I, I don't like it. I, I, I feel like if there would have been one store with one set of characters that just stayed the same and the pricing didn't change from week to week, that would have been better. Uh, it just seems like a weird way of doing it. I don't think it's player friendly at all. All right, all right. I, I think there's aspects that were player friendly, but I, I agree with what you said there. All right. So in total, was 20, now that we've looked back on pretty much everything that happened, good and bad in 2022, was it a success in Marvel Strike Force or was 2022 a big miss for them? I feel like it, it was, you know, two steps forward, one step back on everything, and, and it's a net positive for sure. Yeah, I feel that way as well. When you look at the game modes that we've got, yeah. when we look at all the cheating that was going on in the beginning yeah. of the year that's kind of been eliminated, uh, the bugs that were happening all the way until October, like pretty prevalent. I, I don't think there was as many game breaking bugs in November and December. So uh, hopefully someone that's looking back and all that uh, info doesn't track that and say no 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 it's still going on in december but yeah i think i think overall the game is in a better place we have more things to do um there's there's always some negatives like some of these month-long milestone events some of these grindy events some of these things uh the bugs the offers not being able to complete milestones but i think overall it has been a positive year yeah for sure all right so that is it um any any other final thoughts on marvel strike force in 2022 brother uh for me the addition of meaningful game modes like Cosmic Crucible and the Scourge unlock events makes the year a success. I like it. I like it. I think I think it was a success as well. Uh, that is it. Let me know your thoughts. Was 2022 a net positive or negative for you and Marvel Strike Force? I know there's been a lot of negatives, but I think uh, overall, with all the complaining that we've done, all the pushback we've had on devs for this thing, I think it ended up to be a very positive year. Uh, any other final thoughts before we get out of here to this uh, do it. final 
weekly news update of 2022. It's a long one. It's a long, long, longer than I expected. All right. Uh, check me out on social media. If you haven't already, guys, check out some of the sponsors if you want to support the channel. And check out some of my other videos as well. Are you afraid of the final weekly news fist bump of 2022, my brother? Woo! Oh, yeah. Hog fist bump. Valley Flat Mobile Gamer out. Have a great rest of 2022, guys.